Welcome to our short video uh, about our upcoming seminar, The Embodied Life via Meditation, Movement, Deep Listening. My husband, Russell Delman, and I have been practicing uh, throughout our marriage for 47 years, uh, awareness practices and practices of presence. And we welcome you to join us at this upcoming seminar. And I think Russell's going to tell you a little bit about, a little bit more mm. about the seminar. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. And we're very grateful to Zist. We've been coming to Zist more than 20 years. We've been teaching this work there. And um, it's one of our favorite places. So thank you. And uh, yeah, just a word first about a Zoom retreat in general. We have been amazed as people who are not so technocratic um, to that the Zoom retreats we've been doing have been so intimate, so helpful for people. So many people are finding learning in their own homes actually transfers the learning in an unexpected way. So although we'd love to be with you in person, there are advantages to Zoom, and we've learned to use the technology in a way that's not tiring. Our practices, we'll be doing a lot of practices as well as talks and conversation. Our practices are very nourishing. They really help us connect to our inner world and learn to listen at a really deep level. So one of the strong influences on us, we've been influenced by the Zen tradition particularly, and Suzuki Roshi, the Chunryu Suzuki, who developed, um, who wrote Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Many of you probably have heard of that. He had this very Zen phrase. He said, the most important thing is to find the most important thing. And what does that really mean? Well, in many ways, it's how do we listen freshly to what is wanted from us in our inner world, in the world around us, and maybe even, we could say, in, in the totality of our life, our life destiny. And this pandemic has been challenging for many, many people in so many ways, but one of the potential gifts is that we can step back from ordinary time, ordinary life, and maybe freshly ask, hmm, what is it that I haven't been listening to? What is it that might be a kind of direction to reorient my life? Is it about work, about my relationships, about how I'm approaching my inner world? So our work really approaches these in a very integrated way, a way of meeting what lives in the body, what lives in our thoughts, and lives in our feelings. So we worked uh, very closely with Dr. Feldenkrais, Moshe Feldenkrais, and did his trainings, and then we taught his trainings for over 40 years uh, no, not around... Not quite 40, maybe 20? 20. Oh, we've known him <laughs> for 40. Um, but uh, yes, all over Europe and America, and we've seen how human, we humans develop, and we see how consciousness can be developed through the body. That the body is a doorway to awareness and to presence. And this discovery that we can be lost in our thoughts, lost in our feelings, go back and forth between thoughts and feelings and stories we're telling ourselves. But if we can find our ground in the physical body, connected to this great body of the earth, mm. so it's not only in ourselves, it's in connection to the world, your brain has another way to orient attention. Instead of repeating the old stories and the old feelings and the fears, and we come into presence because your body is always right here. 
Can you feel that right now if you bring your attention, just even for a moment, to the sensations of sitting? Where's your right foot? Your left foot? You have to come out of your stories and into this moment, at least briefly. And that's a doorway to presence. It's a beginning, that's a practice. And it's what keeps us tethered to uh, our inner and outer reality so that we don't just float away uh, being carried by our feelings and our thoughts and the past, really, mm -hmm. or the future. So we have some, I think, really unique practices that bring us into uh, where we truly would like to be more present in more moments of our life so that we can be there for the other as well as ourselves, as well as being there for climate change, as well as being there for social justice, as well as being aware of what's truly needed in this world to work together and to bring forth something better. So in our teachings, <clears throat> one of the, the main uh, practices is what we call embodied meditation, which is a way of listening with kindness as we sit quietly with thoughts and feelings and sensations. We try to get to, we practice to just sit authentically being in a larger space, allowing what is true and what's living in ourselves, but not attaching to it. And it's a surprise, because we learn that meditation is not about your thoughts, really. It's deeper. It's, the thoughts are like the surface of the ocean. We learn to go under the thoughts, not fight them, not get rid of them. Deeper than mindfulness is bodyfulness and heartfulness, living under the mindfulness. Another practice is this conscious uh, embodied listening, this listening through the body <clears throat> to the feeling body, what we call the feeling body. And you might place your left hand on your chest right now, one of the gestures we work through of sensing the kind of hello in there with a warm heart towards all that appears. Mm -hmm. And by listening in this way, we may be having more access to the wisdom mm -hmm. of the body mm -hmm. that is so much greater than we know. Mm -hmm. yeah, most people don't realize there's actually a brain living in our chest. There are tens of thousands of brain cells, neurons, that speak to this brain about our relationships, about our feelings. And we can learn how to listen, how to learn the language of the feeling body. So I would say that <clears throat> the integrating practice of the meditation and the listening to the feeling body into the wisdom body is our movement work and the work of gesture. And through this, the movement of the human body, we can begin to integrate the thoughts and the feelings with the body and find, in fact, that we can live in a greater body of spaciousness outside the body while we were truly in the body, and also a spaciousness within the body, because we know that with all these feelings and thoughts of the past and the future, there tends to be a constriction that we live in. We can see in our breath, in the musculature, the tissue, in the aging process itself. And so this integration of the meditation the feeling body, the wisdom body, the movement and gesture of the human being can bring us and lead us to spaciousness, which allows us freedom. Mm, beautiful.
in this discovery that this I, this true I of awareness is larger hmm. than our personal history, the, the wounds and joys of our history, that's all included, but the awareness is larger and transformative. So we invite you to come and transform with us and we hope very much that you might find the most important thing for your life. And hope you'll join us. These uh, retreats tend to be both deep and joyful and would love to see you there. Bye. Bye.